Well, I've been asked by a few uh, subscribers to um, do a walkthrough on Peggy Ann. We did one a while ago, but it's got a little bit out of date. So um, I've decided today I've been doing a bit of painting and I'm just watching paint dry at the moment. So I thought it'd be a good time to um, film a bit of a walkthrough. Now, when we do this, realize this boat started life as a work boat. I built it from the deck up. So I bought the hulls uh, and the deck I installed the engines, did all the engineering, all the plumbing, all the wiring. I know where everything is on the boat, but it did start life as a work boat. The area I'm standing on at the moment, uh, the aft deck, used to be clear space. And we used to take the boat out and do uh, educational programs for year 11 biology students. So I used to have a group of kids um, on the boat twice a day, and um, that's how I used to make a buck. But... Uh, yeah, look, a, a guy came along and offered me really good money for the business. I sold the business to him, had his own boat. So I kept uh, Peggy Ann and uh, I built this cabin you can see here uh, on the aft deck, filled up the aft deck space. That gives us a nice little double cabin, uh, a bit more accommodation and uh, used up a big area that really wasn't, uh, couldn't be used as a cruising boat. So I turned it from a working boat into a cruising boat. She's not in survey anymore, it's not worth um, keeping it in survey. Uh, it's been archived, but building it to survey, she's got some good bilge pumping uh, facilities on it and she's got um, single compartment buoyancy, which means that each hull is segregated up into three watertight compartments. So um, that just makes you feel a little bit safer if you do hole the boat in uh, any spot, uh, the other compartments should keep you afloat. Anyway, that's um, how it all evolved. So the boat didn't really come off a drawing board and was built. It, uh, it virtually evolved. Of course, when I was working it, um, I didn't have a mast or a sail on it. It was purely a power boat. Uh, and it's only after I took the boat up to the top end of Australia and had the southeast trades blowing up from behind the whole trip, I decided I should harness a bit of that energy and uh, I stepped the mast on the boat and installed the headsail. So now we motor sail around everywhere. She won't sail by herself, tends to round up if you just try and sail it on the headsail alone. But um, motor sailing really makes the motion of the boat a lot nicer. Catamarans are inherently a bit too stable. You come off a swell or a wave and they tend to flick back quite hard. So by having the sail out, it just smooths the motion out a heap. And you really notice it, okay? It's, um, you know, a lot more comfortable when the head sail is deployed. And we pick up a knot, knot and a half, depending on the conditions. So it uh, really helps with the fuel burn as well. So that's how the boat has evolved. She's now 19 years old. She was uh, a Millennium boat. She was launched in 2000, July. So she's just coming up to being 19 years old and uh, I'm just putting a lick of paint on it. So um, there's a little bit of stuff around, but anyway, I'll try and film around that. Anyway, let's go and have a look and, um, and see what the boat looks like. We'll start at the back and then work our way to the front. Okay, well, right at the back of the boat, um, I've got my dinghy hanging on davit. It's a good setup. Um, the davit's only got one sheave at the top of it and uh, the dinghy hangs off a bridle. It's very easy to launch and retrieve and just recently we've gone to this uh, rotor molded dinghy. It's called a spin drift and it really is fantastic. It looks a bit of a mess at the moment because I'm painting I've got a lot of stuff sitting in it that wouldn't usually be there but um, it's a good uh, really tough little tender and it does the job pretty well. Uh, four house horsepower outboard on the back of it and it probably gets along at about 10, uh, 10 or 15 knots I guess. So that's our dinghy. If it's in the water we've got the back door here that gives us access to the boat so that's how we get on and off when we're out on a, um, at anchor uh, or on a mooring somewhere. This table is just a fold up table I've got on the aft deck here. So this aft deck area is usually a lot clearer than that. I've only got that there because I'm mixing paint on it. Yeah, that's not usually there. We've got a couple of life rings up on the aft deck here, um, left over from our survey times. We had to have life rings when we were in survey and I had them and it sort of breaks the back area of this cabin up. Okay, you can see the cabin I've built there. It's a nice airy cabin. 
all of the stuff in the tubs here are just paint that I've got there while I'm painting the boat so excuse me for um, not uh, cleaning that up but I'm halfway through a job so down the side here you can see we've got nice wide side decks I'll just walk you up the front so you're not walking along sideways it's all one level and you walk up to the foredeck area and I'll have to be careful up here because I've just painted up here this morning so it's quite easy to get up to the foredeck area and you can see we've got seats up here it's a great spot to have sundowners and you've got good access to the anchor windlass the windlass I use is a, a mechanical one it's not an electric one I got it for nothing been there for 19 years never broken down it's um, a pretty good sort of windlass we run a uh, quite a big Sarka I'm not sure how big I think it's about 24 kg the Sarka anchor but that uh, nests up into the bow there really well and that's our anchoring setup and I just stood in some paint no worries okay and uh, down there I don't know if you can see it but that's our chain locker so we've got 50 meters of um, 8 millimeter chain and I've got some other stuff stuck in there at the moment while I'm painting and in this locker here we've got the winch handle I've got a bridle in there and a bit of other stuff and all the warp you can see is uh, warp I use for uh, a sea anchor that I carry on the boat so uh, nice area up here on this side there's a locker I think it's already open Okay, just a rope locker in there so we can store ropes um, for mooring. That's all good. Um, I've got winches here for furling the headsail. So you can see that our headsail's on a furler. The bag I've got flying up there is to keep the swallows off. Um, but uh, you can see the headsail's on a furler and this line runs back to this winch and that's how we um, that's how we furl the headsail. It's quite a heavy headsail, it's 10 ounce cloth, big heavy uh, bit of gear, and um, it uh, takes a bit of furling. We'll have a look on the roof. So you can see I've got a tower on the roof, radome, TV, antenna, aerials, I've got a spotlight there and a horn. And if you look down at the back of the roof area, there's two Carly floats. So those big Carly floats you can see they're left over from survey days. You had to have them on them to uh, on it to, to use the boat in survey. They're a float off raft that uh, if the boat sinks they float off and give you something to hold on to. And you can see I've got uh, quite a few solar panels up on the roof as well and a wind generator. So the wind gen helps if the sun's not shining but uh, the solar panels put in up to 30 amps of, uh, of um, current. So it's all good. The mast has stepped onto the roof and we've got a compression post inside, I'll see, show you later on. Unfurling the head saw and uh, un unfurling it and furling it up, it's all done from deck level so we don't have to muck around with halyards up on the roof. Walking down, back down the other side, there's a door here that opens into the saloon. So that um, opens into the saloon area and there's my helm position. So I've got good access from the helm. Um, this is the position I steer at and I've got good access to the side deck. So if you're berthing on this side especially, it's um, nice and handy for tying up and things like that. We'll have a look around here in a moment. I'll just take you down the back of the boat. On this side I've got um, a door cut into the bulwark. So that gives us some um, good access on and off the boat when we're in the marina berth here. So I've got the door there and the one in the back and that gives you pretty good access. And then coming down this side, you can see I've got fishing rods and um, I've also got a really good barbecue. Okay, it's a galley mate and um, it's an excellent barbie, I love it. I've just taken it home and cleaned it up. Uh, when I use this, I put a, a Barbie mat on there, a rubber mat, and that lasts me a whole season. And then I just clean it up with some other cleaner when I get home. So this is a gas unit. Um, and then next to it, I've got a bit of a worktop, filleting fish and whatever. 
and a sink underneath it. I've got storage uh, underneath that, so a bit of painting gear, a bit more painting gear, and then more storage down underneath the sink. So this is a bit like our laundry area down the back here. Okay, there's storage down under the bed actually in this cabin. So there's one storage area here. We keep um, we keep uh, a ladder for the the, the the swim platform. There's some uh, fold-up seats in there that we use quite a bit, and there's tubs with dive gear and you know, cast nets and all sorts of things. A few spare thongs, and then next to it. We've got a smaller locker, not quite as deep. But there's our gas bottle for the barbecue, you can see at the back. And we've got a little bit of other maintenance gear, a bit of oil, a trolley for um, a trolley that we take shopping, we have to renew it. A bit of gas for our little gas burner barbecue, but um, yeah, that's where we store the gas bottle. It's above deck and vented over the side, so uh, not a problem. Down in the floor on the aft deck here, we've got a couple of lazarettes, one in each hull. So this is a good st storage area. It's also our tiller flat, so you can see we've got all of our um, steering gear, our hydraulic steering, and uh, the tillers running down to the rudders, that's all um, in this compartment and we carry a bit of dinghy fuel down there as well and a good spot for fenders and uh, other bits and pieces so plenty of room for storage on this side of the tiller flat on both sides this is what's called a bilge manifold so these taps actually run a uh, copper pipe up to all the bilges in the boats as i said we've got uh, single compartment buoyancy so every um, watertight compartment has to have a bilge pump running to it and this manifold runs a suction line to each one of those compartments on this hull. And there's the same setup on the other hull. Uh, and that actually also has the bilge pump. It's a 240 volt electric pump. And you can pump a lot of water out uh, with that pump. So that's um, our bilge manifold for pumping water out of our watertight compartments. We'll just move forward again. So this is our head. It's a standalone head. This is uh, just the toilet and a wash basin. We've got this breezeway at the back here too, and I had this big work deck area here. And when I built this cabin, I wondered how I was going to do it. Whether I was going to extend this wall all the way through to the front. I didn't. I left this airspace, and it works really well. Uh, it's a great area if you've got. Um, wet clothes or wet coats or umbrellas you can leave them out in this area we even hang clothes up in here on the rainy days so that um, you know you can dry things without them being too wet and it really does work well I had to this dimension here I had to uh, get from being able to open and close this door being in survey this whole cockpit or this whole cabin area has got to be waterproof and this is a watertight door Okay, you see a rubber seal on it and uh, there's dogs there that dog it down so it's a bit like a submarine um, and the other door is watertight as well so by rights you can close all the doors and keep all the air inside the boat it's a bit of an overkill I reckon but um, especially for a cruising boat but that's what we had to do to satisfy the survey requirements so a dog there for dogging the door up and um, yeah it's a it's quite a substantial door but I had to swing that out so when I built this aft cabin I had to be able to swing this door out into that area so you can see it's about as close as I could get um, without impinging on the door so it gave us this um, this uh, breezeway if you like and you don't see it on very many boats but I tell you what it's pretty handy um, I wouldn't be without it actually it's uh, worked out very well but it's just the way I um, got around filling up this half deck area but here is a 12 volt uh, fridge and it's a ripper you can see it's Aussie fridge 12 volt eutectic plate and that freezer that side 
fridge this side and that fridge it just about freezes those cans down the bottom but food in here will freeze for sure but doing it that way it works really well and that's been the best thing of that and these things are so efficient they don't run very much at all and um, it's just a great fridge so fridge freezer okay in this cabin we've got our main cabin and it's quite salubrious it's a queen size bed walk around good airy cabin um, it's uh, got storage underneath we've got a hanging locker in here so you've got a bit of room for clothes Some, somehow you always end up with too many clothes but um, it's a good a good uh, airy room I like this cabin this is where I sleep all the time 12 volt fan up there they're great little fans they work really well nice and quiet and uh, helps you get a good night's sleep and the best thing about this cabin too and this breezeway is if someone wants to stay up and watch TV in the saloon it's quite easy for me to shut these doors and sleep with the TV going so now we're going to head into the saloon and you can see we've got seating down here for about six or seven people so uh, it's a good social area uh, on the port side this used to be life jacket, jacket storage I used to store uh, I think it was 60 odd life jackets on the boat and they were in this locker but when I stopped cruising I turned it into a shower so you can see we've got a really good shower cubicle here it's quite roomy and a hand basin for brushing your teeth and uh, that sort of thing as well but yeah it's a, a really uh, nice compact little shower area I hate the shower in the toilet setup that you see a lot on smaller boats you either end up with wet toilet paper or uh, you know it's just it's just too too complicated I think and usually squeezed into too small an area so I like the fact that we've got our um, toilet and our head separated on this side really dedicated to our helm position and we've got the helm here it's all under covers at the moment but there's all the instrumentation chart plotter here as well all covered up autopilot wouldn't be without and it's been the best thing on the boat that course master autopilot it really does uh, does the job it's quite an old unit now but it's still working all right and we've got engine installations two engines of course uh, one in each hull and they're uh, 38 horsepower Kubotas and touch wood they're running all right they're still doing a good job up on the headline and we've got our radar unit the radar there I've had to replace that once in the 17 years so I put a second hand for Uno unit on it um, early in the piece but that died uh, two years ago and I replaced it with another second hand unit but a, a newer model and then we've got our VHF radio there's a spotlight on the roof comes down through this handle here and some a switch panel for lights um, a GME radio that I would never buy again absolutely hopeless and it's broken down again so been back to the manufacturer about three times I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole it's been terrible this used to be a nav table and I talked a little bit about nav on the boaties breakfast just recently I used to have a half size nav table here and it was really good when um, you were using paper charts and when we were working with the school kids they used to use, do a bit of chart work to work out where we were taking samples from so the nav table was uh, good but about five or six years ago I thought that nav table is not really being used at all and we didn't have much of a helm position because you can see from the seats uh, down in the boat if you sit down here I'll just sit down now and I'll put the camera at eye level as I sit down you can see you haven't got any vision uh, outside of the boat so you're sitting down lower than being able to look out of the window so it was a bit of a problem so I pulled out the nav table and built this unit and it's a helm seat and what we do is we just pull this step out underneath and that gives you a step up onto the helm seat and then when I'm sitting up here I've got great vision all around the boat so from the helm seat we can um, really have a good look around and good access to the instruments and the helm it's pretty comfy up here um, it's a great seat and it gives you good vision so we never steer the boat when we're traveling we always use autopilot and we're just checking air position every now and then and keeping a good lookout for other boats but this area is a lot better utilized now 
than what it was in just being a chart table because we never really used the chart table at all uh, with electronic charts it just became a little bit redundant um, this step two if you've got a lot of people on the boat it comes right out and you can turn it round and you can use that as another seat and um, sit and converse with people in the uh, in the saloon area so it gives you another couple of seats in the saloon if you're entertaining uh, a big crew which doesn't happen often but you never know it's good to be able to do it when you're in port like this it just slips back underneath and it's out the way so you've got good access to your door and and other things down two steps on the starboard side and we've got our galley so it's very compact it's great if you're out at sea, you can see uh, with me down here, you can virtually just put your back up against the, the wall there and work on the on this, on the, this top or on the stove um, or, or in the sink. So it's a great um, area if it's a little bit rough, you're not getting thrown around all over the place, you can really wedge yourself in. Um, in the galley we've got storage here for plates, cups, knives and forks, stay alive pills. Okay, a few wine glasses there. We've got um, a Teflon worktop with the sink underneath. So there's a good sized sink there for washing dishes, just uh, for putting hot pots. This is a 240 uh, volt stove and all of our cooking, we run the gen set when we're doing our cooking. I don't like the idea of having gas down here in the hull, so we do it on uh, 240 volts. There's more um, more storage underneath, pots and pans, toaster. It's all pretty compact, but it all works all right. And even a microwave. Microwave oven as well. Okay, in under here was a, a locker I couldn't really use, so I made it into a, um, a waste bin. I just used a chlorine tub and cut a hole in the bench you couldn't do anything in that part of the boat anyway. That slot's in there and it's a really good little waste bin for when people are working in the galley. Forward of the galley we've got a little bar fridge. There's one fridge down there, that's a 12 volt fridge. And then up forward of the galley, up one step, and you're in one of the front cabins. These cabins, I don't know, they're, these berths are not quite a double berth, they're a little bit narrow, about four inches narrower than a double berth. But when we have people on board, they'll quite often sleep in this bed, it's pretty cosy, but um, you get two people in it at a pinch. There's a hatch in the roof. So you've got good ventilation in here. And uh, they're pretty cosy sort of, pretty cosy sort of cabins. Um, bit of storage underneath. Vacuum cleaner, we've got blankets. Towels, too many towels, blankets and sheets, spare blankets and sheets. Uh, the water bottle there, we use this a lot because um, when we're making a cup of tea, we like to use uh, water that hasn't been in our tanks and through our system, so that's what that water bottle's there for. Okay, back up into the saloon, TV on this bulkhead. Um, this is my uh, 12 and 20, 240 volt um, switch panel, so all BEP stuff, it's been really good, been fantastic really, um, haven't had any problems with it, so this is my 12 volt panel, my 12 volt systems, and then down here this is 240 volts, so you, we're on shore power at the moment, but you can run your jet gen set through that as well, so that turns an inverter on, I only run a small inverter on the boat, it's only an 800 watt, but that charges our laptops and phones and runs the TV. So we don't have to run the gen set when we're using uh, those types of uh, appliances. Two steps down onto the port side now. Another cabin, mirror image of the one we looked at before. Exactly the same thing. So you can see uh, that's another little cabin, same storage in that underneath. Um, down this side we've got storage under here. I carry a lot of my uh, videoing gear. We've got drawers, first aid, we've got flares, um, we've got a few uh, other things there. Underneath here is virtually a pantry. 
so it's quite a big area. Um, I've got a bit of stuff stuffed in here as well because we had guests on the boat, but that's our pantry you can see on that side of the, the um, area, so we keep a lot of spare food and that in there. Down the bottom I've got tools, hose clips, other types of things, and our battery bank. Okay, so there's our batteries down there. We've got those two batteries and another one up a bit higher. Gives us 300 amp hours of um, 12 volt power. And of course, um, battery chargers, inverters, uh, DC to DC charger, and solar regulators. Okay, so our switches up here, we've got a few gauges for solar panels. You can see even though we've got the uh, battery charger charging everything up at the moment, the solar panels are putting a bit in. And there's another one there for the wind gen as well. That's not putting anything in because it's switched off. A bit noisy in the marina. This is one of the latest additions to the boat. That's all you can see here. This is a diesel uh, heater and fantastic for this time of the year. You can turn that off, it runs on, it runs on diesel and it pumps up warm air through this vent here. That does the, uh, the main cabin and there's another um, vent out in the aft cabin as well. So in our bedroom we've got really good, uh, really good warm nights with the diesel heater. And you can see we've got an aircon here, it's just a standalone Dimplex one that you buy at um, Harvey Norman or the good guys. Fantastic when you're in a marina on hot days. We find that we don't need air conditioning when we're out. Uh, you, if you're out at anchor, there's usually a bit of breeze coming off the water and it's cooler. You can see that uh, the boat has good hatches up under the brow so we can keep them open um, even if it's raining and they let a lot of air through the boat. At both sides we've got these um, moonlight hatches that let a lot of air into the boat. Something that I'm pretty proud of on this boat are my engine rooms. It is a catamaran. I'd love to have a boat that had a walk-in engine room. So you walk down steps or stairs into the engine room. You'd have a bit of carpet either side of the engine. Your motor sitting there. You'd have a fridge on one side of the engine room, toolbox on the other. That'd be heaven, but you're not going to get that in a catamaran. So my engine rooms aren't too bad though. You've got good access once you've opened the hatch. You can see you virtually scrape down on top of the engine. So these are the little um, 38 horse horsepower um, Kubotas. They're a great little motor. Uh, no electronics on them. All gear driven. Um, the uh, marinization was done by um, Daikon. And I've had to, this tank you can see here, I've had to replace that once. We've had that rebuilt. Uh, just a couple of years ago, the exhaust manifold burned out into it. ZF gearboxes, a very standard, basic little diesel motor. Down in the engine room you can see I've got uh, 440 litres of diesel on either side in stainless tanks. Um, that is the octopus pump that runs the hydraulic steering. Um, the other part of the engine room that I'm really impressed with are the um, dripless seals you can see down there. They're PSS shaft seals and they're fantastic. Never any water in the bilge. If there's water in the bilge I know there's something wrong because um, you can see the bilges are quite dry. Um, and if there's any water in the bilge I'm onto it straight away because those seals don't let any water in whatsoever. Okay, You can see there's another um, watertight bulkhead at the back of the engine room. These engines run, both of them going, I use about 1.3 litres a nautical mile. So that's for 1.3 litres a nautical mile for six or seven and a half knots, depending on whether we're motor sailing or not. So the, the efficiency is pretty good. And people have asked, you know, whether you're going to buy a boat that gets up on boogies or whether you're happy to do your six or seven. I think 10 knots is a great speed. Yeah, as far as speed goes and, and fuel burn, um, I don't mind travelling at six or seven knots. I love being out there, so I'm a bit of a freak. But um, since we've been retired, uh, we only run downwind. We don't punch it into the wind. This boat hates going into the wind anyway, so anything over five knots, don't even think about it, we'll stay anchored. 
we'll wait for the wind to go around to the direction we want it and then we'll go and run it. And if it's blowing, say, 25, 30 knots, as long as you're going with it, you can still have a pretty comfortable trip. But driving a boat into that sort of wind, I'm too old for it. Anyway, look guys, um, that's our boat. That's Peggy Ann. Uh, as I said, she wasn't designed really. She just naturally um, evolved. Um, but she's a good, comfortable boat and she does everything we want. She draws uh, 0.7 of a metre. The beam is 5.6 and the length is about 13 and a half metres. So um, that's from the end of the dinghy to the, the bow roller. So there are the dimensions of it. She weighs 13 tonne with uh, water and fuel on. So quite a heavy boat. There's no foam sandwich in this. It's all solid glass hulls. Uh, the top sides are glass over ply. So there's been no thought really given to uh, making it a light boat. And look, that really helps with the motion of a catamaran, catamaran as well. A lot of the lighter cats, they tend to move around an awful lot, whereas um, we sort of just move through the water at a displacement speed, I guess. Well, that's our boat. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, look around it. Uh, it does the job for us. Don't forget, um, this is how we do it. You might have a totally different boat, but the most important thing is just get out there and do it because we love the life. We love being out on the boat, it's fantastic. So make sure you get out and do it. The other thing is, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, ring the bell and you'll get a notification when our videos come up. Please subscribe and um, see you next Saturday on the Boaties Breakfast. Thanks for watching dudes.